Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1419. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about gold hitting a new all-time high. As the stock market finishes a six-week winning streak, and starts to correct a little bit as sentiment is extremely high on the greed side. We were expecting a pullback here in mid-October, and it looks like it's being instigated by the bond market and interest rates jumping up with fears of renewed inflation. The 10-year Treasury note briefly climbed above 4.2% earlier yesterday for the first time in three months before pulling back. Cautious commentary from Federal Reserve officials on the path of interest rate cuts has pushed yields higher. Yields have actually increased since the Fed cut by a half point a month ago. Part of that move can be attributed to improving economic data, but some of that increase is due to permission the Fed won't be as aggressive with rate cuts moving forward. Now traders are seeing an 89% chance of a quarter percent rate cut at the Fed's next meeting on November 7th. Quincy Crosby, LPL Financial Chief Global Strategist, said the market had moved into overbought territory, making it vulnerable to anything it perceives as negative. It's now worried that the Fed has not declared victory on inflation, and not to mention the concerns post-election. With the S&P 500 up over 22% year-to-date, the S&P has been on a tear and reached all-time highs, as has gold. Gold spot prices have soared above $2,700 an ounce and rallied for five days in a row. Year-to-date, the spot price of gold is up more than 30%, and silver is up over 45% year-to-date. Many analysts are bullish, expecting gold to reach $3,000 an ounce by 2025. But some people are pretty cautious, like John Reed, senior market strategist at World Gold Council Trade Association, who said declining interest rates will be a nice tailwind for the gold market and increase prices over the next 6 to 12 months. But you could very well see volatility in the short term, driven partly by speculative investors. Yeah, well, gold is known to be a safe haven asset, and it does well in times of rising geopolitical tensions like we have right now, especially in the Middle East, but in multiple places around the globe. We also have broader macroeconomic uncertainties with inflation and what the Fed's going to do and corporate earnings. Also, hanging out there somewhere in the horizon is going to be the realization that many of the Magnificent Seven companies have invested heavily in AI and have yet to see a return on their investment. They're having to continue to invest more so that they're guaranteed to get AI chips from NVIDIA and others. But as I said, they, can, they have yet to be able to point to bottom line profits that these expenditures and very large expenditures they are that they've made so far. At some point, there's going to be a reckoning and either profits have to show up from AI or spending's going to have to cut back. But for right now, the market is giving those companies a pass. And I think that's saying it's predicting that there will be a bottom line benefit. Also in the news was the Boeing new contract proposal with the Machinist Union, which could end the strike that's been going on for more than a month. The ratification vote is set for today. So along with gold moving, the important thing is the direction of interest rates. We want interest rates to continue lower, and the Fed is going to be reliant on the economic data coming in to see whether that's still possible. If you recall, I've been reporting inflation has been a little bit stubborn, but it's the job market being weak that allowed the Fed to make its half a percentage point cut in the first place. I would imagine with the hurricanes, the port strikes, and the Boeing strike, employment will probably still look weak, and that should give the Fed enough room to cut another quarter point in November. But we'll wait and see and be reporting back to you on how that all turns out. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter for more wealth tips for your financial freedom. 
That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.